Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being part of this live broadcast today. I welcome you to today's edition of Forms and Patterns. My name is Gwe Gadidiji. God bless you. Uh, amen. Last week, we continued the series that we began some weeks ago. We've been on this series, Recovering Your Dominion. And the Lord has been helping us. We have looked into understanding divine plan. We have looked into understanding divine assignment. We have looked into understanding divine making. And uh, last week, we also, we were taken through understanding divine authority. Why all that we have understood by the help of the Holy Spirit are necessary, there is still more that we must understand. So today we are going further in this journey of understanding and we'll be discovering understanding divine power. Understanding divine power. Somebody might say, what is the difference between the authority I understood last week and the power that you are talking about today? Now, why they look a bit similar, there is a great difference between the word authority and the word power. Now, it is one thing to be authorized to do a thing. It is another thing to be enabled, to be capable to do it. It's one thing for you to have this impression that whatever you want to do, you could just go ahead and do it. It's another thing for you to be able to do what you want to do. So, if you can see the sequence, it is one thing to know what to do or to be permitted to do it. It's another thing to have the ability to do it. Today, we will be looking at understanding divine power, knowing fully well that the purpose of God for your life, which you have understood at the beginning, and the assignment that God has given to you, the responsibility that God has put your name in front of, and the making that God has begun with you, that while they are necessary, there is still a need for you to be empowered to do all that you have discovered that you must do. Now, when Paul, who was Saul, encountered Jesus, and you, you still remember the incidents, how he lost his sight. Now, at that moment, when he bowed down his head, he said, Lord, what would you have me do? Now, God said, God directed him to a place. In fact, God, God didn't even direct. God directed somebody to him. God directed somebody to him who took him somewhere and prayed for him, and he got his sight. But what the Lord told him was, you will be told what you must do. Now, it is important. He said, Lord, what would you have me do? God said, someone will tell you what you must do. Not what you may do, what you must do. Now, at the time when he knew what he must do, and the thing he must suffer, he still needed to have the ability to do what he must do. Now, I could be restored by God for a responsibility of delivering my people from the bondage of sin. That could be the assignment and the purpose of God for my life. That is one thing for me to know. But it is another thing for me to have the capacity to do what I've been raised up to do. And so today we want to look at understanding divine power. We want to look at the place of power in the execution of God's will. The place of God's power in a man in the execution of God's will on the earth. Now let's quickly go to the book of First Peter. No, sorry, Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 1 and we will read we we'll read verse 3 and I might like to start the reading from verse 2 so that we can have a basis now, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 to 3 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, see that. Grace and peace. When we talk about grace, what are we talking about? Because it gives a background to what we want to look at. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Now, it has been said that for every race, there is a need for grace. 
for you to successfully start a race. For you to successfully start a race and conclude on that race, you need grace. You need an enablement from God to quicken your mortal bodies, to give, to give uh, ease to your pursuits. You see, it is one thing for you to have uh, a potential. It is another thing for that potential to be activated. It's another thing for that activated potential to be deployed. When grace is released upon a man, what is either too dormant in his life or a life is activated and is released for manifestation. It says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it means as a man increases in the knowledge of God, as a man goes deeper in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, as a man knows his God the more, then he enjoys more grace and more peace from God. You remember that place in Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 32. But, but the people, the people who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do great exploit. The people who know their God, they shall be strong and they will carry out great exploit. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. For the people who do know their God, they shall be strong. So, their strength comes from their knowledge of their God. So, a man who knows his God is not a weakling and is not a weak person on the head. He's a strong person by the knowledge that he has. He says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ as his divine power. And that's what we are understanding as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. All things that pertain to your life. All things that pertain to your representation of God on the head. All things that pertain to your relevance, your influence on the head has been given to you. Now see how you are to assess it, how you are to enjoy it. It says, has been given to us all things that pertains to life. Let me read verse 3 again. It says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and by virtue. He called us by glory and by virtue and the more we know him who called us, the more we are exposed to what he has called us with. You see, for every assignment, there is a consignment. For every vision, there is a provision. For every responsibility of God on your life, there, is an, there, is a, there are resources of God that are made available. However, you cannot enjoy them in spite of their availability until you know about the one who has called you. Until you know more about his calling on your life. So a man who desires to receive a calling from God, to receive a calling from God, yet abandoning the one who calls him, is a man who will struggle trying to find a way and never get away. You cannot receive an assignment from God and try to accomplish it in your own strength. And I want us to quickly read something in the book of Micah. Micah chapter 5. Verse 2 to 5. Very quickly, Micah chapter 5. Verse 2 to verse 5. It says, Now, it, the, there's some, you know, some Bible versions have head, headlines. The heading for this is the coming Messiah. From verse 2 says, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, Yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel. Out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from the old, from everlasting. Therefore he shall give them up until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel. Now see verse 4. And he shall stand, talking about the Messiah that is coming, who has come, and he shall stand and 
feed his flock in the strength of the Lord. He shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord. The question is, what was the Messiah expected to do? He was expected to feed the flock. However, he could do it by his own power. He could do it by his own strength. But the scripture says, he shall stand to feed the flock of the Lord in the strength of the Lord. That gives us a picture of what we are talking about. It is one thing for you to know what God expects you to do. It's another thing for you to go ahead and achieve it in your own strength and power. And the scripture says, it's not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. A man who receives an assignment of God, from God and decides to execute the assignment in his own wisdom is a man who is actually limiting himself from the word go. Because a man's power, no matter how much is it, it is, it is still limited compared to God's own. So whatever you have, it is limited compared to what God has. So you must therefore increase in the knowledge of that God so that you can begin to maximize what he has made available for you. He has made all things that you need to live a, a life of honor, a life of glory, a life of power. He has made them available for you. However, the more you know him who has made those things available, the more you are able to claim your inheritance. And let's quickly go to the book of Revelations chapter 5. Revelations chapter 5 and I will read I will read verse 9 and then and te, verse 9 10 then I will go to verse 12 Revelations chapter 9 chapter 5 it says in verse 9 and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth <laughs> now we shall reign on the earth simply because you have made us king and we understood the, the aspect of divine making you are made a king because you, a king is only a king that can make you a king by the way some people call themselves kingmakers. They make kings. But if you also look at them, they actually, uh, they've been there before those kings were. It's only what you have that you can give. Those people, they gather together, they submit their authority, and they give it to a man. And therefore, a man rises up and becomes a king. That is one aspect of becoming a king. Another aspect is when a king makes you a king. That comes without... A, a consensus opinion. It, it doesn't require people. It requires the opinion, the will of that king. So, for you to become king, you must be made a king by a king. Now, we understand that the scripture says he has made us kings and priests. So, it's only a king and a priest who can make another king or another priest. That's very important. We must note. And it says, we shall reign on the heads. We will not only reign with Christ in eternity, we will also reign now. Now, for us to reign now, what do we have? How can we reign now? That is the question. And that is what understanding divine power is expected to launch us into. In verse 12, it says, Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing." Worthy is the lamb that was slain. The lamb that was slain was not slain to receive things because he lacked them. He wasn't slain to receive these things because he needed them. He was slain to receive them so that anyone that comes to God through him can have access to them. That is why you cannot claim access when you don't even know the one who possesses. For instance... I am not a son of Donald Trump. I do not know him. He does not know me. I can never lay claim to his inheritance. He can't give it to one that does not know him. He can't give it because somebody desires it. No. It goes to people that were born into his house. 
You must know him. He must know you because, by the way, he's so rich that his riches can go beyond his family. So he can give it to somebody that he did not give back to. But it is premised on him knowing the people and the people knowing him. So Jesus was slain to receive. And as many that has received him, as many that has believed him, to them he has given power to become sons of God. And as sons of God, we are therefore qualified for inheritance in God. He was slain to receive. See the things he was slain to receive. Don't forget we said we shall reign on the earth. What do we need to reign on the earth? They were the things that Jesus was slain to receive. We will reign on the earth through these things. If any man lacks this, if any man has no part in this, such a person cannot claim to be in dominion anywhere on the earth. He says he was slain to receive power. He was slain to receive riches. He was slain to receive wisdom. He was slain to receive strength. He was slain to receive honor. He was slain to receive glory. He was slain to receive blessing. In the book of Psalms, chapter 49, it says, A man who is in honor and does not remain is like the beast that perish. So if a man has honor, he must remain in honor. He must grow in honor. He must grow. And the more a man has honor, the more honor a man has, the more honorable the things he does are. So if you are not a man of honor, you cannot do honorable things. And now, if you do not have power, how can you command results? How can you get things done? You need power. In fact, the scripture says in Deuteronomy that don't forget the Lord your God because it is him that gives you power to get wealth. You need power. You need wisdom. It is not enough to be wealthy. You must be wise. Otherwise, your experience might be like that of Nabot, the husband of Abigail whose foolishness was so glaring that even his wife was aware that he was a fool. And so because he was not a wise man, in his riches he was not able to remain. He lost his life because of his foolishness. So you cannot command result on a consistent basis when you lack wisdom. And so, a man who is in honor must seek to be strong. You need the strength, and not your own human strength, but the strength that comes from the Lord. Apostle Paul praying to God that please take this turn away from me. In 2 Corinthians, he says, I pray to God three times to take away this turn from me. But see what the Lord told him. See the reply of God. In verse, from verse 8 of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And let me just read it from verse 7. 2 Corinthians 12 from verse 7. It says, Unless I should be exalted of measure by the relations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, 